So we showed uh, our family number groups of 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, and 8, 3, 9, 6. We showed how they're separated by thirds or separated by sixths. They're never separated by anything else, by the way. We showed that they're represented by this geometry of triangulation, of the hexagon, even of the diamond. Why is it significant and why are those numbers, why do they have to be uh, positive or negative at the same time? Well, one, I showed that it accounts for the geometric side of what we're going to do. In addition to that, those numbers being synchronized in such a way are being activated at the same moment. Okay? In, in engineering, we could call it a moment of activation, a pulse. That's what allows me to get a binary flip-flop. Okay? Because we're working with something we're going to call a binary triplet. So I'm going to explain what that is. Now you notice I have these triplets in my family number groups. But I also have something binary here, which is my 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. The repeating sequence underlying the binary code of computer science. And when my 1s, 4s, and 7s are all positive, and let's say my 2, 5, and 8s are negative, um, I've got uh, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. In other words, I have my binary flip-flop from positive to negative, never being broken. Same with my 2, 5, and 8s. I have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And what that means is ultimately, I don't need 9 now to represent my system. I really need 18 because there's a positive and negative for every number. Every number has the potential to be polarized. All right? How about my 3, 9, and 6? Because I, this is weird now. I've, I've got this thing. I've got to come to my 9 before I can go back. So how to create that? In this system now, when my 9 is positive, which is the initial emanation, the projection, the initial uh, will, the initial drive, the initial input of energy, my positive 9. When my 9 is positive, my 3 and 6 are negative. So in other words, when this energy is coming out, magnetism is going in to the center. When this energy is absent, or, or what you could say when it's going in or when it's absent, uh, when it creates a pivot, which is my negative 9, and my 3 and 6 are both positive coming out. And then what that does is it gives me, let's say my 3 is positive, the positive, negative, positive. Whenever you end on a number in this system, you give it the reverse polarity and you go in the other direction. So if I go positive, negative, positive, my next number is going to be the negative 6, which is under here. And it's going to go negative, positive, negative. Positive, negative, positive. Okay, so it's giving me a sequence here. It's 3, 9, 6, 6, 9, 3. All right. Uh, alternating back and forth. When we Put this in a three-dimensional model, you're going to understand exactly what I might mean by that. So what I'm showing here is a pulse. The nine is a surge. Sometimes you can refer to it as an, an inertia ether, um, which Einstein postulated um, during, after the famous Nicholson-Morley experiment that supposedly disproved the existence of an ether. Einstein said, well, if it's not that, it must be an inertia ether, and that's what this is. It's a pulse, or a surge, or a vector that's driving everything, that's causing this doubling, okay? So again, now I need 18 numbers to represent my system, each number having a positive and negative, and each family number group, there's three of them, okay? They're nothing smaller than groups of three in this system. There's three family number groups, and they're each activated at a moment. So if I have 18 numbers all together to represent my system, and if only three of those numbers are ever positive at a time, that means only one-sixth of my numbers are ever activated or positive at a time. Okay, now if you don't follow me there, just wait, because you will when we do the torus. Only one-sixth of my numbers are ever positive. That's one positive family number group 
per 18 numbers. All right. Is that clear when you're saying 18 numbers? Are you saying you have 18 around the, you said enough? Not 18 around the circle, but 18 because there's, this is a, say this is a positive 9, there's really a negative 9 behind it. This is a positive 1, there's really a negative 1 on the other side. So again, this is just a two-dimensional cross-section of a circle, but it's explaining what we're going to see in three dimensions. Okay? So I think I covered most of what I wanted to say there. The only thing that I wanted you to see now is what is this really doing? When we get to this in physical reality, well, if you look at this shape closely, and I will show, it's actually the shape of your DNA spiral helix. Even the, the DNA that your life is operating on is based on this shape. It's a coil. Everything physical is a coil. It's conducting an energy, which is this. If the, the more high inductance it is, the better it conducts this energy, the more alive it is. And number nine is perfection, consciousness, the apex of consciousness, full 100% consciousness. And when we work with sound, and we work with numbers, that's what we're trying to do. 100% full efficiency, whether it's our pathway of motion, whether it's electrical efficiency, everything is interconnected. And it's connected from here, the zero point. Zero is not a number on any multiplication series. It's an absence. It's a hole in the center. And what this is, is a vortex. It's compressing things, sucking them in at the top, decompressing them, shooting them out at the bottom. Okay? It's a cosmic grinder. You could think of it as black hole to white hole, compression to decompression. Your, your own body, the human torso, the mortal coil, is based on this. It sucks things in at the top, whips them around, demolecularizes them, shoots them out at the bottom. All right? Everything is based on that. The Earth's magnetic field, it's called a torus. The human aura is said to be a torus. Um, the spiral galaxies are toruses. Your blood cells are a torus. You will get to know that very clearly. Let's look again here. If I take into account all these multiplication tables and I look at them as a sequence, I'll notice something very interesting is happening here. Now here's my first control. I should say this, a very basic point. Multiplication tables, or as we've seen, similarly, division tables, okay, um, are two things. They can either be straight lines or circles. It doesn't get any more easy than that. Multiplication tables are straight lines or circles. It's pretty easy to see. We can see the straight lines here. I don't think anybody's having a problem there. Multiplication tables are modeling straight lines. Okay, increments of straight lines. What do I mean they're, multi they're showing circles too? Well, in my initial sample, remember I said one was my control. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine around the circle. How about if I start with two? Two, four, six, eight, one, three, five, seven, nine, just like my multiples of two. Three, six, nine, three, six, nine, three, six, nine. Multiples of three. Four, eight, three, seven, um, two, six, one, five, nine, just the same as here, four, eight, three, seven, two, six, one, five, nine. So in other words, you can do it any way you want. They're either going out in straight lines or they're going around in circles. Both those conditions must be met simultaneously in order to have a true system. And this is why time cannot move backwards. Okay? This is why this system is creating a one-way stemic living flow. It's called a positive flow. The energy of the nine is a positive force. The, the reality of the higher world is a 100% positive reality. 